is an updated video on how to set up an intelligent agent in Brightspace that'll flag when students have had no activity for a period of time and send them an email automatically and also send that same email to you so that you can keep track, one, of attendance and two, of whether or not they've been engaged in the class so that you can take whatever action necessary under federal law to identify students who are not attending class once they've received financial aid. So I'm looking right now at my Brightspace page in at, at uh, Southern Maine Community College and what I'm going to do is set up what's called an intelligent agent. You do that from one of the courses itself. I've actually got them set up in each of these courses but let's just go and do one. So you go to the class, the home page or anywhere else and you go to course administration. A number of things you can do here if you scroll down near the bottom there's one that's called intelligent agents under communication. I've already got one set up I'm just gonna make a new one just to go through the steps. So you have to give this thing a name and mine's gonna be seven day notification. The description can be whatever you want. I don't really need to put a description in here. And as far as categories go, unless you have a number of these agents and want to group them together in categories, there's no real reason to do that. One thing you have to do is to enable the agent. And if next semester you copy a course and include the intelligent agents, you're going to have to re-enable it for that new course. If you make an intelligent agent for one course and want to use it in a different course, you can do that by importing just the intelligent agents into a different course but again once you do that you're still going to have to open it up edit it and then do agent is enabled or check and agent is enabled frequency in my case i want this to go weekly i want it to repeat every week i have mine happen on monday I, for whatever reason i want mine to be eight o'clock the reason is because at 8 15 or just shortly after eight i do my attendance and so if I get a notification that someone has gone more than a week, I know they weren't in, in tend, attending the Zoom class and or doing Brightspace during that period of time, so I, then I mark them absent. This is the thing I'm changing. The start date for this must be longer after, or a longer period after the course ends than the period of time you've identified. And I'm going to identify a seven-day period. So if they go more than seven days without a, um, any activity I want them to get this notice. If you put the beginning of the class even though Brightspace knows the class hasn't started yet it'll take that date literally. So what you want to do is go to the following week so if this class meets on Tuesday for instance rather than Tuesday the 30th I'm gonna have this start on Tuesday September 6th so it's eight days after the beginning of the class so that they don't start getting notices before the class even starts which by the way happened to me this semester for several students end date though is also important because otherwise it'll keep sending them to them until you get to the end date now in this case the end date they put in was one day later so my end date is going to be the end of the semester the end of the semester is going to be right there um, now I want all students visible in the class list Login activity, for me it's seven days. You might want to pick a longer period of time. Close activity, or class a course activity, also seven days. Um, and no release conditions because I want it to happen automatically. Down here, though, this is important. If you don't check take action every time, it'll only do this once, and it's the first time they log in. That's the kind of thing you do for an intelligent agent that did like a welcome to the class, you know, for the first time they log in. I notice it's the first time you've logged in, etc. For this one, though, I want it to take action every single week. And then I want it to send an email. Now you get to indicate what that email is. And here's where you end up using the um, replaceable strings, I believe they're called. Replacement, yeah, replace strings is what they're called. And replace strings can include a number of things those are the options right there for replace strings uh, I'm gonna use several of these in my email um, the ones I'm gonna use are going to be initiating user which is not even listed is that right oh it's not listed because what I'm looking for is their email address so I come up here so initiating user right there that's the one I plan to use I'm just gonna copy that and I'm gonna go back out and then that's going to be 
in the to um, window for uh, email address. I also, though, want to send it to myself. So I'm just going to indicate a blind email sent to myself so that I always know when they get one of these. And then the subject is you haven't accessed your right space course in seven days. So they know what they're, um, they're, what they're getting this. I mean, even say the past week, but anyway, as far as what other replacement strings you can use, those are the ones you can use in the body of the email. And here I'm going to use um, a couple of these replacement strings. One of them is org unit. Um, another is the uh, initiating user first name. So what I'm going to do is paste an email in here. So you can see that dear initiating user first name, it gives them you know a little dear Dan, dear Mark, whatever. And then you have these other replacement strings, last login date, org unit name, last course access date. So those are the ones I'm using in here. And now you, you note that they have to have little squirrely um, brackets, no, pr no um, spaces, uppercase, lowercase is important. These are basically computer code, so you have to do it exactly right, which is why I kind of like just going up here and copying the one that I want and pasting it in so I don't mistype it when I'm putting it in. Yeah. So now, once this is done, you can add a file if you want. There's no reason to do that. But then you just come down here and do save and close. Now, I'm not going to save this because I already got one set up that looks exactly like I want it to look. So I'm just going to cancel it. But when you do save it, it'll be listed right here. And you can go in and edit it if you want to make a change of some kind. Um, you can also just pick it. And when you pick it, it also goes into the edit option. So you don't need to actually say edit. Once you've done this, it'll send these automatic emails. And just to show you what they look like, I'll go to my email list. Um, so here's an example. It went to a student named Christopher. I'll blur that name out. Um, the whole name out. Um, and you notice it went eight, at 8 o'clock, which was an hour ago today. Uh, and this is one that went out a little bit prematurely since I had put the wrong start date in. That's why I remade this video. So it just comes out and does this, lets them know that you're concerned. Um, you lets them know you can change the grade if you have to drop them, but it's really just a way for me to keep track of who's here and who isn't in the Zoom era, which is a lot harder to do than it used to be when people were in the classroom directly. If um, anyone at school, SMCC, has any questions, go ahead and send me an email and uh, I will be happy to help you out with it or contact uh, Michael or the other people who are do the support work for Brightspace.